Hey guys, welcome back to the Blade Shop. Today I'm out here working on some knife sheaths. I need to make a sheath for this knife, for this knife, for this knife, this knife, this knife, and I think that's it for today. So we we talk about blades, we talk about knife design, we talk about how a knife is supposed to work or how it's going to work, the edge retention, all that kind of stuff, but we would be remiss if we overlooked uh, another very important aspect of using knives, which is carrying them and protecting them and and or protecting um, things from them that we don't want to cut. And so obviously for most in most cases uh, for a fixed blade knife, we're talking about a sheath. So I want to show you my overall favorite sheath design that I use for probably most uh, or use a variation of for the most of the knives that I make and uh, just kind of show you a little bit about the, the philosophy or rationale around using the type of sheath that I do mostly, that I do most of the time. How do you say that? I don't know. Anyway, let's get into it. I like to use some heavy uh, paper for my patterns and actually this is uh, pretty handy because when I buy leather and it's rolled up, they package it in this thick brown paper and so I, I use it for my patterns. This sheath is a a pretty basic uh, sheath and it's it's made out of one piece of leather except for the welt of course which goes here so not only is it very serviceable and sturdy it's efficient and simple to make so this particular sheath is going to work for a variety of knives within a certain size range so a couple things to think about when you're making a sheath or designing a sheath is like I just mentioned how how does it protect the knife blade and uh, how does it protect the knife blade from, or other things from the knife blade as it were. And so, you know, the way you carry it, you know, on your belt or what have you, in different positions, sitting down, hiking, standing up, whatever the case may be, all of these things need to be considered in the final design. And so one of the most important things in uh, accomplishing that is the retention of how does it hold the blade, how does it hold the knife in there so that it doesn't fall out and then become completely irrelevant. So what we're working on today is a pouch style sheath and the, the retention that it provides comes from a couple different things. First of all is the coverage on the knife itself, the handle itself, and the blade of course as well. And then secondly is, is the forming of the leather around the contours of the knife handle. And both of these together provide, can provide a very secure uh, and comfortable uh, fit to, to this sheath to keep the knife in place and yet uh, keep it readily accessible uh, to the user when it's needed because that's also important as well. You know, one of the popular uh, knife retention designs for sheaths has to do with some kind of a strap that you snap around the handle of the knife and those can be useful uh, depending on the knife but something to keep in mind is if that strap ever comes unsnapped how well is the knife going to be retained in the sheath after that point and in my opinion unless there's enough blade length unless there's enough of the knife that's still in the sheath uh, the retention is going to be you know drastically reduced and your knife can fall out pretty easily. So a knife, something like this with a four inch blade and a handle that's uh, a little, just a little bit longer than that, um, if, if you have a snap strap down here right up against the Ricasso and it's, it somehow um, comes off or gets unsnapped, you know, snagged on something, then that's all you have left as far as what the sheath is holding on to is just this part of the knife, which in this case is less than half of the entire blade. And that's not very secure. So that's one reason why I like the pouch style sheath because if the, if the knife is in the sheath, then it it's provides a significant amount of retention and there's only, you know, this much of the, uh, the knife that's not being held onto by the sheath. So these are actually tin snips, but I find they work pretty well as 
leather shears actually and so I use them frequently to cut out my leather when I'm making sheaths. Obviously the welt of the knife sheath is what protects the stitching from the blade and as you put the knife in the sheath and carry it in there it allows the uh, edge to rest against something and not cut the threads and therefore destroy the sheath. Alright, so I've got a couple of these stitched up and uh, I've got to finish the edges, obviously. First of all, is just the size, it, you know, it's got to be the right size for that particular knife. Um, if I make, you know, for example, this up here, if I make this a lot wider, or just bigger in general, it's going to provide a lot more wiggle room for this knife. Um, but as it is, the way it's designed, I haven't done any forming on this sheath at all, and it already holds the knife very well. I mean, I, I don't, there's, I'm not going to have to do hardly any um, forming on that, just as it sits right here, and that's, that's uh, due to design. So when you come up with your pattern, where did it go? This deal right here, um, you kind of learn what you know how much clearance you need because you do need some clearance to get the knife in and out of the sheath without cutting the you know cutting things and that kind of stuff. Uh, but so it's, it's really kind of a trial and error. And if you come in, if you have a different knife, it's going to be a little different probably. You know, depending on how thick the handle scales are, different things like that. But you kind of start to get a feel for how much clearance um, you need on your pattern. And I do absolutely recommend making a pattern before you go and cut your leather. Um, but uh, so you can see right here uh, on this on this particular pattern, it has I don't know, you know about three eighths to half an inch clearance out here or, or along the welt, and then um, I add probably another eighth inch or so. You know, once we get up to where the handle is, uh, just because obviously the handle is much thicker than the blade and so just giving that extra room for that to fit in there um, and this I find that this general rule works very well for most knives and um, it, it just works. I do want to talk about forming really quick here so one thing you can do is wet forming which I'm not going to do on these ones but you can take a spray bottle with water and, and mist this down or even a sponge um, you can do it even when it's dyed like this and get it damp enough to, the, to where it'll take some forming, um, you know, with the, with a smooth, you know, slicker tool like this or something similar. And then you can really kind of get the contours of the, of the handle and uh, just press down in there and it, 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 it helps hold, hold the, uh, the knife in there. One thing you do kind of have to watch out for though is if you get real aggressive on that, um, especially if the sheath is a little wider up at this point here, you can, when you take the knife in and out, sometimes you can start to cut into this portion right here on the inside because it's pressed down in there. And so it's gonna start contacting the inside of the leather right here instead of uh, you know, having clearance or contacting the weld. So that's something you kind of have to be aware of. And then other ways you can, uh, you can form, I find is, you don't have to get it wet with water. Sometimes you can uh, use dye. So if you're doing leather dye, um, just like this for, for coloring, uh, put that on there and it soaks in and it leaves the leather pretty pliable for a time until it dries. And you can kind of use that window of opportunity to form the sheath a little bit as well. And then there's a certain amount you can just do dry. And that's kind of what I'm doing on this one right here. Hi right, guys, thanks for being here today. And I've uh, got these sheets finished up, so I'm just putting the final edges on these blades and we'll get them boxed up and ready to send out. But uh, hopefully this gave you some ideas on knife sheaths and kind of let you know a little bit, um, really my favorite knife sheath for most of the knives I make and why I use it for most of the knives I make. So appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you on the next video.